Good morning and welcome to your AfriOne show. Uh, today promises to be a very interesting conversation that I'm going to be having with my guest. And you can see how he looks more African than me. <laughs> He's more African than me. Um, as much as I do AfriOne show, sometimes I wonder, okay, why am I not wearing all those natives and stuff? But I guess it's just because I'm cool this way. Well, it is being said this morning. Family, join me. Welcome. A wonderful guest that I have come to know. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I met you... Was it this month or last month? Something like that. I'm trying to think. Last month. Yes. Well, last month. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and the incredible job this man has done across Africa, and um, he's going to be telling us what what are the things that he has done, and the opportunity that when I met with him, seeing his heart and his passion for Africans uh, for me was was quite interesting. To be very honest, I have heard a lot of leaders talk about African issue, but this man sitting on my side, I see him take proactive action. He's not just a talker, he's a doer. And with the opportunity that I have sitting with him and we talk, um, he runs an organization called ICU. <laughs> I know you would think ICU is an hospital, it's not a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> like ICU, what the hell? Um, help us with the ICU. International Community Unifiers. International Community, you hear now, International Community Unifiers. But as we get into our conversations this morning, we're going to see how he's going to let us know what the International Community Unifiers, they do, and how to navigate and also take an opportunity from what he's offering. If you're an African living in South Africa, if an African living in a country that is not yours, this is the conversations for you. With that being said, join me welcome, my awesome guest, Mr. Dennis. I'll state that part yes. before I pronounce the other name wrongly. Yeah, no, so please fine. welcome to Everyone Show. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much to to be invited or to be a part of the show. Yes, sir. And I hope for you driving to this place wasn't that too long. Ah. <laughs> it was not too long, but uh, if but you was don't long. know the place, and then it tends to be a... <laughs> yes, that's a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> but as we begin the show, please tell me, who is Mr. Dennis for people who are watching him for the very first time? All right. Um, I'm Dennis Mpangani Matuse, the president or the founder and the president of International Community Unifiers, which are founded in 1992. Founded in 1992? 1992. <laughs> so when I found it, it was called International uh, Organization of Foreigners. Okay. But after some time, like 2001, we changed the name to International Community Unifiers. Reasons, we have a um, number of South Africans. Okay. Because this was meant special for the foreigners. Mm. But number of South Africans, and then they came, like uh, claiming some cases, like he, the husband took the, ch the kids to whatever country and all of this. And then we used to mediate for such a problems. Oh, okay. And then uh, bringing the people together when there are uh, misunderstandings between the family, South African and uh, the foreigner, and then we go and mediate as Africans to say, no, let's go. You as you are from this country, like you're from Zimbabwe, you're from Mozambique, you're from Malawi, let's go and mediate for this issue which this, this family is facing. So having that uh, approach mm. is where we had the number of uh, South Africans coming to the organization and uh, they didn't want to, to register or to join as international international organization of foreigners mm -hmm. and we changed the name to international community unifiers i see you i'm tempted to ask you during the period of when uh, because you said south africans it was um, what's it called foreigners mm -hmm. national organization of foreigners before you now changed to i see you yes what were the cases, if you don't mind mentioning, few cases that the South Africans brings to your table before you then change the name? Yeah, um, it's like uh, example as I've said, they're in marriage. Okay. But uh, after maybe say, having certain conflicts, and then one will decide, so ah, let me go back home. He take the kids. Or is this uh, the is the wife or is the man doing that? And then they will decide to do something differently. And then those are cases which we use to face and then to be addressed because after that there is no uh, understanding between the two and we were supposed to mediate and then until they reach the common sense to say okay to visit the kids or to be together on this way and then planning everything mm. so we are not on the issue of saying maybe we are uh, giving a divorce or whatever and what about as an Africans, we know how do we mediate for the family problems which they, they do exist. So 
that is one of the situations. So those are the cases which we have to, we use to face. And also, for me to start the organization, it was a, a, a situation of um, xenophobia, which is the you know, mm, mm. stuff. And then... Uh, because I most wanted to tempt you to ask you to say, what makes you start the organization in that 19... That, that's long. Like long. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's long, but after when we were approaching like uh, Dr. Mandela getting released, mm. and then it was that freedom of speech. And then I took an opportunity to say, now is the time whereby I will approach, I will uh, set up everything, and then do the approach to the government to say there is this situation. Starting in 1992 mm. is where I think they mm. tend to be, and then that is one of the situations which we came across with. Okay. And... Uh, And after starting that, for the, as it was that freedom of speech, it made us to to start the organization, doing the constitution and mm. all these, and maybe having meetings with the the government, special home affairs, because the bad part for the foreigners or for the for the Africans who are not South Africans mm. are the documents. So oh, if one is not documented, okay. then it tends to be the problem. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so um, after since that very particular moment, if you don't mind me, I'm what you call. I remember um, having the conversations with you where you were showing me some some pictures or some certain movements that mm -hmm. you did, and which the pictures I think they're on plain sight in your office. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Do you want to talk to me about some of the achievements prior to changing the name that you have been able to spearhead uh, when it comes to? either from intern, what's called when it was foreigner to now ICU, which is International Community of Unifiers. Unifiers. So some of the, the achievement that you have been able to forerun, TOSFA, can you be help, um, be help us with either one or two? Um, I'll start on the time whereby the organization was founded. And then we had some follow-ups which we had done with the government, and it was a march which took place in 19, 1995, okay. 20 September. And then when the march took place, it was the, some of the grievances. It was that to stop calling people or foreigners makwere kwere or grigambas. Hmm? What did you say? Makwere kwere or? Makwere kwere or grigambas. Grimba. Grigambas. <laughs> so that grigambas. Was, yeah. The, That's the first time I'm names, hearing that. The, the names which they were giving to those who are from outside. Say, ah, those are makwere kwere. Those are grigambas. Those whatever. So saying... One of the grievances was that we don't want people to call each other or to call the foreigners as Makwere Kwere yeah. or as Greek members. The march took place, and one of the grievances also, it was to see if the government accepts we can give the exemption to, do, to the Africans who are here in South Africa. Okay. And that in 1996, the application started. Mm -hmm. We have been granted after the march. We've been granted the, the, the exemption for the foreign community, whereby they've obtained the IDs which sets the country of origin but residence in South Africa. Okay. So that is one of the achievement of which at the, the time who received the memorandum, it was uh, one of the directors at uh, Harrison Street, 77 okay. Harrison Street in Johannesburg, of which that was addressed to the Minister of Home Affairs, whom was uh, Dr. Mangosutu Gacha Putelezi. Also, okay. by then. By then. So yeah. it's the one who we had uh, after that follow ups, meetings, and all until we were granted the exemption, which took place in 1996. Mm -hmm. And then approvals, they started in 1997. People were getting approved, getting the documents, and all. So it was a, a great achievement which we have done as an organization. Trying to pioneer that, what were the challenges you faced um, in, in seeing that becoming a reality? The challenges, um, it was tough because uh, you approach this, it was it was like a pillar to post. Okay. But finally, I managed to break. And then uh, during the march and all of this, I remember having meetings in some of the, the, the those political uh, uh, party organizations. parties or organization. And I went to even to Shell House, whereby is it, uh, it was the headquarters of the ANC. Okay. I had meetings there. It was tough, but uh, I've managed because there is whereby I get a breakthrough and then you're organizing the march and then to show them I'm not claiming, I'm having the people who are seeking for such a document. Mm. 
So, so now with that being said, I remember we were talking and, um, for instance, you were making me to understand some of the initiatives you've done in terms of, now this is me shifting down to the name Unifier, mm-hmm. in terms of unifying Africa and so on. Before we talk about your ICU, when you look at Africa as a nation, and somebody were to ask you, what do you want to see from your experience thus far getting to this very particular place, what would be that? You know, for, for that, I would love to see leaders of the continent. Because if I understand there is no any country in the continent of Africa, all the, the states that are free, we have our freedom. So to push that, our leaders they have to be wise enough uh, to see if they can create employment. We have many things which really, they are just left out like uh, we have our resources. Mm. And then whereby we are, we are using or there, uh, there, there are people or there are those whom they come just to collect our resources and mm. then mm. out of mm. the country and uh, creating employments in their country. Yeah, that's true. If really our leaders are adopting the system to say, um, we have to process everything, our raw material to be processed in the country is whereby we're supposed to hide, to have a high number of employment because it was no one even to come to South Africa to say, now to suffer this kind of consequences to say, is the foreigner, is this and that, is the Greek gamba, is all those kind of the things. Mm, so mm, mm. that is one of the things which our leaders in the country, presidents, they have to stand and sing that point to say, nothing like our raw material to be taken out the way as it is, those who want, do want to explore that, they have to bring their machines, process everything in the country, whereby we'll be creating employment. I know that, yes, you fight for um, what you call foreigners then, but now it's now a total broad spectrum, which includes international. That's why it's called International Community Unifier. Yes, yes. And now, what were the program, apart from the fact that, yes, you are assisting people in terms of getting documented and also trying to mediate between the government of South Africa and these people that is on the ground, what were the other projects that you have done thus far um, that is in, in terms of empowering the minds of the people to see us or to see everyone as Africans? Yes, yes. Oh, for that, I've seen that the youth, really, they don't understand because if we look at the situation, when we talk about uh, the borders, we talk about everything like myself. Mm-hmm. I was not there when they divided the, the continent to be, this is a country X, yeah. this is one, two, and three. And then when we look to the youth, they don't understand if really some of those they used to, ah, when we go outside, like the program which I have, Gala Africa. Gala Africa is like play Africa. Mm. So... Going out with the youth, like taking the youth of South Africa, go out of the country, mm. like going to Zimbabwe, going to Mozambique, going to Malawi. They will just uh, come with a question when we arrive to the place. Mr. Bangan, we're not seeing any difference between South Africa and Malawi or with the Mozambique or whatever. What is wrong? Why is there is this and that? And then that's where I educate them. And then for the program, I take the, the, the youth, of the Sadek region first, I have to start on the on the level of the Sadek region, mm. taking them outside to see if we can um, to show them to say it's not that the the the, the, the human being or those foreigners who are considered foreigners in South Africa they change to be human being when they enter South Africa. So to make them to understand that, and then they get to, oh, but those are the people like us, and then the situation, the the lifestyle is the same, and then. I educate them. And then coming back, like I will give the example of uh, the xenophobia which year after in 2008. Yeah, yeah. It was tense. It was tough. Mm. I've made it. We went to left and right. There are places at the, um, is it Boxbeck, which is called Ramaphosa, the Reha Park, and all of these. It was very, very tough. Many things like we can look at the Julie Street. Mm. It's destroyed. It doesn't look like it was before. When you want a car, you are going to buy at uh, Julie Street with the prices X and all of this. But now Julie Street tends to be something. When you move there, if you you know the the past to the present moment, you mm. see that very differently mm. due to the issue of xenophobia which took place. And then, as I'm taking the youth outside, coming back, after two weeks, they will call, Mr. Bangani, when, when will we be going out again? 
which country we're we'll going to eat, and then to see what is what. So the people were the people you were taking out from South Africa to go explore this country, they were enjoying it. They were enjoying, and then like uh, after finishing the program, coming back mm. in two weeks time, they were called back. Wow. And as we are traveling to those countries, is whereby I used to tell them, explore, check, chat with the people what you can do in this country, what plans you can have, because it's not only in South Africa whereby employment or uh, chances of life can be. You can do anything like, uh, example, to the country which we're on it. Mm -hmm. You can come and invest here. There is a, a lot of opportunities which you, you can help. Like, we can talk to the government mm -hmm. and then to see if how to legalize. Some when of you those, take, there when is you take one. This, mm -hmm. When you take this men, sorry to cut you, when you take this young man, I need to use the word because I don't know their age bracket. Mm -hmm. When you take this young man to this very particular place, um, do you people in those countries where you go, do you people explore the opportunities that is available in that very particular country for them to see? Yes, of course, because once we reach the place, we are not focusing only to the to the event or discussions or whatever what we are going to do. Okay, there are break and there is information which we invite the leaders of the country mm. to come and share. For our speaking for stand program, which we have, which is a dialogue, mm. we mm. do jointly with the the people of the country whereby they will face questions to say ah south africa where well, we used to hear this on the news this and that why is it like that and then they have to explain mm. so they will feel sorry when maybe they'll talk about killing or doing this wrong to the to the african they'll feel sorry coming back or to the same discussion they'll say sorry to what if you were to look currently, because of my time, if you were to look currently now in the landscape of you being here, I'm laughing if you said you, your organization is registered in 1992. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the progression from 1992 now to, to where we are, which is 2024, mm -hmm. what changes have you seen and what changes do you hope to see? Um, you know, changes that they part. We are still facing the problem because the man mentality of the foreigner being Africans still there. Okay. Of which it will be tough for us really to eat in, is a, it needs a spite. And then for us to, to make the, the sum of the, the community being South African to change the mind and then to see each other as African. So is it a, a big exercise? A long way to go for us to have that done. Mm. But uh, I believe through the programs, the problem which we are facing now is due to resources because your staff, your approach this is it doesn't that. I don't know what is needed to 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 for them to believe to what uh, is taking place and then the education which is there. I believe if I can call the number of the people whom I took them out, you can hear what experience they had and then everyone he can approach he, he can say by himself to say no 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 the program is good on this way and this way mm -hmm. but to have a support is a problem you go to a government you submit they turn down the application you don't have an answer which is positive and then we get stuck and the way which the 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 the, the program was moving was moving very smoothly, and the people they were understand there are areas whereby when they will talk about xenophobia, they didn't want to practice. I said, no, 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 we can't. Because this xenophobia also is played by those multi-parties. One, you can uh, check the amount and give one of the sources to say, okay, uh, start something like this, and then xenophobia to make the government to be ungovernable. So, so from your own research and experience, you, you felt that it's also powered by some of these parties. Of course, yes. Okay. Because it's not there's no way we, we you are staying. You have your, there are neighbors even to your studio or to the place where you working. Mm. There are neighbors. Yeah. You help the neighbor here as a South African, but tomorrow or at night you will tend to say you are a foreigner, starting to beat, starting to kill, and all of this. It doesn't make sense where that started. 
Mm. So those are the problems. All right, my family, I think we will come back. We'll go on a break. Um, then we'll come back and continue. Question I want to ask him because he said, and there's a question you answer when we come back, the whole question of you trying as much as possible to get sponsors or support system yes. to be able to pioneer these South Africans to expose them to opportunities that are within the country yes. of South Africa and also outside of the country. My question I want to ask you as we go on break, do you think that we as Africans in South Africa here we are united to see a progressive South Africa mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. That's a question that he needs to think and we'll come back later on on the second segment for us to have that conversation. Please, in case if you have any question you want to ask us, you can use the email on the screen for us to be able to have these very particular conversations. Mm -hmm. My fear about his whole thing that he's saying currently, and this is me thinking, mm -hmm. if you help your fellow Africans and tomorrow something happened, you are the first that they will come and attack. The question there is, should we then help or keep quiet. Because if I help you, and tomorrow you need to score points with the political parties, who seems to sponsor you for you to get, or for you to hurt the foreigners? Will I be one of the person you will hurt? Is that the reason why we're not seeing the Africans living in South Africa doing cultural exchange or business exchange program? Because chances are they may get hurt. We'll be right back after this, don't go anywhere. Family, we're back again on the second segment right here on the Afro One Show. Um, before we went on a break, we're talking to Mr. Dennis, um, who is the forerunner currently of ICU, which is known as International Community Unifier, um, a platform where he tried everything possible for him to see how to unify all the international community that are currently in South Africa. I want to encourage you, if you are listening to me or you're watching me currently, and you think that you have a problem that you're currently going through either or with a foreigner or an African living in South Africa. And please use the number that is currently available on the screen and we'll try as much as possible to get him and his team or probably his office to be able to mediate for you. And one of the things I like about his organization is the fact that we as Africans living here, we also have our own problems. And as much as, yes, we're discussing what we're discussing now, we also have our own problems in terms of like one of the things you say in terms of children, marriage, I got tired, I want to leave, blah, blah, blah. You know all of those dynamics that happen and stuff. So please, if you feel like you want somebody to mediate, he's going to tell us by the time we are going to be finishing this show how you can get hold of um, his office and then also the contact details for you to use to do that. But before we went on a break, we're talking about Africans living in South Africa. Do you think from your experience since 1992 when your organization started, looking at us Africans living in South Africa, do you think that we're united as one? Uh, well, that is, is a tricky, very difficult. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's why it's to, called to everyone my show. experience, yes, sir. we are not. Because, example, when we, we, we must say, let's march and then to see if maybe we can be recognized in South Africa. Mm. You'll find that a number of the people, they didn't want, and also I did understand one part where they said, no, 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 no. Mr. Mpangani was giving an amount then now. He's calling us for such a meeting and then to see if the police they will come and arrest us. What? Uh -huh. So now, besides of that, to some of the things like, I do have the, uh, I have the office, I help like thousands and thousands of no, people. guys, thousands. Well, no, when you showed me that and office, I'm like, what the hell? Regime, I don't know. For the people who maybe they can listen to this show, mm. they will be like surprised and then uh, about what I've done because the, my office was like a bridge. Mm. People coming and then going to America, going wherever and all of this. Doctors, accountants and all of this. So they were using the office as like a bridge to, to apply, doing those applications and then from there, moving out. Mm. So uh, one of the things is that like now, we are no longer to the same, like doing uh, documentations or whatever, but the office is there as an organization whereby we're helping people, some of the people, the, the problems which they are facing, like in the families and all. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that the number is, that means the support is very less. And then I'll call those who are members of the uh, organization to say, guys, let's uh, see if we can sustain the organization on this way. Like, let's pop in like 10 rand per month mm. just to sustain the organization. And then one will start calculating, okay, if we give, we are men here being helped by that office. And then if it's 10 rand per month, no, that means this man will tend to be 
Really? Rich man. Yeah. So Africa. those are the problems yeah. which we are facing as African. And the, 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 the same meeting, when you call for a meeting, ah, this one is calling the meeting for his own benefits. Forgetting that there are this, there are many things because South Africa, South Africans, they have to understand. We have to sit with them. We have to participate to their meetings to understand what is the situation and to teach them some of the things, to see the value of foreigners in South Africa. So mm. that is one part. So once you are in South Africa, participate to, the, to any activity which takes place. Mm. Try to say yes or no to something which comes because at the end, we're all Africans. The culture is the same. Do you believe that Africans living in South Africa should get themselves actively involved in the things that is happening in South Africa? Um, being in South Africa, one of the things is that once you're inside, so there is no way you'll go to the other direction than the direction which the owners or the people must stay in the country. They are, they, are, they are following. Okay. You have to follow everything, you follow the law, you follow these, all those things. You have to, and then you'll educate also, you'll show them the way, no, this, this thing is not done on this way. To our culture, this is done on this way and all of this. So, but I will tell you that you're in our country, why must we learn your culture? I didn't get that. I said, but they will tell you, because now you are saying that if these Africans come into the country, the ability for us to do a cultural exchange program mm -hmm. with the people in that on a one-on-one -on -one note and stuff, which is getting involved. Mm -hmm. Now, also part of the statement you said is the fact that we also try as much as possible to teach them to say, no, this is the right yes. way, this is not the right way. Mm -hmm. My question there is this. The people of the land will tell you, you left your country to come to my country mm -hmm. to now teach me your culture. No, it's, we, are, <laughs> we are Africans. The cultures are the same. Okay. If if we look to the backyard, like uh, there are those round round houses which mm. are built to to the house, some of the houses you'll find large yeah, number. Similar. Yeah, you'll find that that house like round is is there. Mm. That is our symbol as Africans to say, okay, no matter what, but your culture is it on this way. Yeah. So that is one of the things. So in terms of sharing. Is very important because really is what it will take us forward. Mm. So really, that is one of the things. First of all, we have to start on our side or whoever as an African to recognize the other, not to, you know, if mistake comes. And what is, I'm things. tempted to ask you, sorry to pause you, I'm tempted to ask you, what is the biggest challenge you as uh, Mr. Dennis that you have ever encountered with one of your clients that almost make you weep. Yeah. I know from 1992 to this very particular point, that would be a lot. But the one you can remember in Tosfa, that when you were dealing with this very particular client, the case on the table, you're like, my God, what the hell is this? <laughs> you don't need to mention name, but yeah. just, just, yeah, just no, a scenario. I, I understand. Because when we are in a discussion, because there are some time we are by... Uh, I participate some of the meetings or uh, I do some programs in the office where I invite South Africans to sit with them and all of this. You'll find the one who will never understand, you'll never take that because I'll uh, tell you something about the history. Mm, mm. At the schools, I don't think if uh, the, our children are teach to the history of how we have obtained this, the, the freedom in South Africa, mm. there is a problem. They don't even bring the hang part Hengpal is whereby when you have committed a crime X, whereby the government of apartheid they will think this is a very serious and then they will uh, just uh, kill you. Mm. Mm. They don't talk about that. They are talking about the free, the, the, the democracy which we came on it now. Mm. And then that brings the problem whereby our children don't understand. No matter you say this, you say that. I say, no, I'm sitting on the desk with the white. My friend is a white person. There is no problem with I'm facing and all of this. And then the history, it has to be done properly at the schools and then for the youth to know. So you because feel that all those kind of they are not educated are enough in terms of their history? No, because the information which I'm talking about, they'll never talk about Hank Paul. Like when we were about to get the freedom, mm. they have removed that. And then the government of Hoparte, they'll say that they've seen, oh, okay, now is the time for us to be hanged. 
So it was good to hang the black people, mm. the South Africans, whom they were only struggling on. But now, as now is the government of, or is it a, a, a <laughs> democracy which is coming? Now we are changing the, the, the tone to say, no, this you have to abolish. It mustn't be this, mustn't be that. To me, it didn't come well because I wanted to see themselves also on the same line, which we were on it before. Mm. Mm. So it's very serious. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. But it's okay. It's okay. I think, like I said to you, this is a platform where you, this is your reality, your experience of what you've experienced. I've said, I've said a lot of stuff that is much more harder than what you're saying. Yes, I yes, promise yes. you. Mm -hmm. For those of you watching, you know, you know, you can go check out the history on after one show. You will see those, mm -hmm. those conversations. But now we were saying something around, um, what you call the economy of this very particular nation and also stroke the continent mm. do you think as us as africans we literally own our economy or our economy is still being for lack of a better word expropriated without compensation <laughs> you know <laughs> this is very serious that's why i've mentioned one part to say our resources not to be taken out of the country for they have to be processed in the country so whereby will create employment for the people for the people yeah and again it has to be something like in the Sadek region at the moment. I will start with the Sadek because yeah. it's whereby you'll find high number of the foreigners coming from those neighboring states. Um, if maybe the Sadek region was having a plan to say, now the country whereby uh, those investors that are coming to invest, not they're coming to invest, they're investing in Africa, but in Africa is only South Africa. Mm. So they have, it has to be a platform to say now, the space or the country which are free now or are on the position to receive the investors is Mozambique, whereby Mozambicans, they will never jump the border again coming to South Africa because employment will be created. Mm. In Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, they will never come to South Africa because the employment will be created by those investors whom they will be going there. Mm. It's not that every investor have to come to South Africa. We have to look at the situation. So now, I'm not saying like... South Africa people, the yeah. they, or investors they must mustn't come to South Africa. Yeah. They have yeah. to come, but we have to share this kind of thing. We have to educate those investors even to know to say it's not only South Africa to invest. But I think <clears throat> the other day, I think I was watching that was before the election. I was watching the, the minister for Home Affairs. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's Minister. I mean, Doctor Aaron Matsaledi. I mean, mm -hmm. choose to be correct. Yes, yes. And he was coming up with a business policy in terms of attracting investment and stuff. Mm -hmm. When you look at the office of the home affairs and what is currently happening now in terms of attracting investors, helping the Africans to get their documentations and stuff and what of that. What do you want to say with that ecosystem of the home affairs being powered by Dr. Aaron Motoledi? Oh, you know, that is one part which I forgot to mention. Like okay. 1994, when we were about to go to the, the elections, foreigners whom they were inside, they've managed to obtain the IDs. When you say for instance, without, in, okay, inside the country, without yeah. yes, okay. without any birth certificate, without anything, it was just to go with the, the witness to say yes, this is staying in, in my place, or I know him for quite some time. Is it here in South Africa? People they've obtained the IDs, and those IDs now, as I'm talking, because they were given that temporal IDs to go and do for voting, to, to, to go and vote after voting, and then they've applied for the proper ID. Applying for a proper ID, now as I'm talking to you, Home Affairs is sitting with the number like 300,000 IDs which are blocked. Why? And those IDs are blocked while the owners of those IDs, they have their accounts, they have their houses, they have, they have many things. They block the IDs. But and the, those no, no, are let's still take it, let's inside. Take it, let's take it slowly. These are IDs that was given to them for I mean, these are ideas that were given to these people by Home Affairs so that they can go and vote. Mm -hmm. Now, after voting, mm -hmm. Home Affairs block the ID. Of course, yes, because is it after certain <laughs> time that is it's very is it is stressful? It's very stressful to my side. I don't understand. I try to. Make I sure. hear it. <laughs> and at the moment, what I'm requesting is that I went. To, I'm, I'm participating some of the meetings and then saying, okay, is it possible for us to give the amnesty to those people? Okay. Because they've obtained the IDs on this way. And there are those whom, when they came at the time, ex at, the, 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 at the time of our apartheid government, and then when they came, they've applied the IDs, they, were, they have approached one of the family to say, no, I want to be a part of uh, your family here. And then they said, oh, okay, now you'll be on the family in mm. And then 
after some time, they'll discover, no, this one is not always traveling to the country X or to Mozambique or mm. to Zimbabwe or whatever. That means it's not a South Africa. They block the ID. With but all... they were the one who gave the ID at first. Is that not so? Yes. <laughs> and then that coming to be blocked, they're saying, okay, there is something which they will say, oh, okay, home affairs, they can give and then they can take back. But when we, we come, we look at the situation which Africans are facing, is it because this is only applied to Africans. There is not even a single white person who will find maybe with a problem like that. So you're saying that, from what you're saying, that it looks as if it's a bias system that favors the white against the black. You know what? I don't know whites are... Oh. How the consideration which the whites are given in South Africa is highly than me as an African. When I walk to the office X, being as a, a, a African as I am, and then they start judging that and that, mm. and then they talk. But if the white person goes in, it will be a different story. So we are free, but We're still in a question mark whereby what kind of a freedom do we have? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, there are many things, some of the issues are political and then. It's not in the area. I, I, I'm tempted to put you on the spot and permit me. I know that mm. I'm trying as much as possible to have this censored. <laughs> if we look at the current political spectrum in South Africa at the moment, which of the political party, and this is solely your opinion, mm -hmm. and please hear me, solely the opinion of him, and so South Africa has given us right to be able to express ourselves mm -hmm. as long as it's not to the detrimental of the nation and its people. It's an opinion, remember, because yes. I have to put that disclaimer. Now, when you look at the political parties currently in South Africa, almost more than 50, mm -hmm. which of the parties do you think that has a progressive agenda to accommodate Africans or probably the people living in South Africa? It is difficult for me to, to give that answer now because since all along we were there and uh, our foreigners are here and all of this and then the treatment continued. There is no way I can recommend to say this, I've done this and that, because the same idea which they give it as an exemption now tends to be the problem. They don't trust this exemption. They don't trust the document. They have to do the rest. This which is called POP to do it at the VFS and all of this. But the person is having the idea on hand. Mm. And why is it the POP? Is having the records in the, at the head office. And then those kind of things which are happening there is something which frustrates. And then a person not knowing, Maybe you're, you're out of the country, you come back to South Africa, you'll be hanged at the airport there, the immigration will say, oh, no. okay, how have you ever obtained this? But it's from the department. Mm. You can see my, my, all the records are there, mm. and it, it tends to be the problem. So I will never mention at the moment as we are from the elections. Mm. There is no way to judge to say this, uh, uh, this party is the best than other. Mm. So at the moment, it's quite difficult for me to say. When you look at the government of national unity, you, you are a founder in the land here. And <laughs> what do you foresee? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're taking me to the level. But anyway, I'm not seeing that moving or going forward. And it's not the proper time where I will talk about because we didn't see any activity, practical wish. But I will tell you that the government of national unity, I remember watching the president, he was saying something somewhere around the past weeks and stuff, that government of national unity, this is not the first time it was done during the period of Nelson Yes, Mandela. it was done in 1994 yeah. in the government of national unity. It was ANC, uh, in Qatar Freedom Party, and uh, this in, in national party. Okay. So there were three. And then that eclipse came on other way, whereby the, uh, the clerk was a vice president. Uh, the Dr. Mangosutu Butelezi was a uh, minister of home affairs. Okay. So that was a, a government of national unity was created at a time. Okay. But now for this now, which is coming with thousands of parties in one government, in one it, it, South Africa is like family. Mm -hmm. And then to have, uh, that is a father, and that one is a father, that one is a father, and then where do, where will go and report? I hear you. So those are the problems which we will be do facing. Do you think that from so what So I'm you not are... seeing, yeah. like, a success to move with the country. Do you think with what the G GNU, that's the name that it was called, um, based on your office and the thing you do, what do you foresee? Now, obviously... The minister, at the moment of recording, the president has not given us his cabinet, so mm. I have to use the word moment. <laughs> Do you foresee, because obviously it's a projection, mm -hmm. which is it can be right, it can be wrong, and mm -hmm. it's okay. Do you foresee that when 
the GNU is fully formed. Mm. Do you foresee that Africans living in South Africa would be protected or it's going to be complicated? It will depend on the situation, on, on the people whom they will be on those positions and into the areas whereby foreigners are getting affected because most of our very important part is the Department of Home Affairs, nothing else. Okay, true. If the Home Affairs do something for the foreigners, like legalize them, like the organization which I'm then say, okay, those who are not, then don't have any document in South Africa. They can come and register to my organization, at least to have the record to say this is so and so, it's mm. controlled. Not even not to control, but yes, it's known as so and so. Come into my office, we'll see the form which is there, and then also the, the cut which will identify the person mm. who doesn't have anything while he's waiting for something to get because. There is no way to chase away the person who is it already in the country. The deportation which is taking place, yeah, is it? I don't know what I'll say because they deport like 50, they'll come more than 50. Because once they drop, they made the border, the person will find, he'll say, let me find a way to go back to South Africa because in my shell, in my house, in my room, I left this and that. Because when they deport, they don't, they don't take your belongings with you. You leave everything there. Mm. You are staying alone in that place and all. A person will fight to say, I'm going back. At the time where he's fighting to come back, he is no longer having money. And then but there are those whom are at the area of the border to say, I want to go to South Africa, but I don't know where. And then he says, oh, no, no, no. I do have a place to say, let's go together. Mm. You'll take three or four coming with them. They'll be in his room like for couple of days, but after that, they will see their way out. We are adding the number. So even the deportation system actually not working? The, uh, that is worse. That is, is, uh, that is worse. It's not working because sometime we were in a discussion <laughs> with the number of the foreigners. They said, ah, South Africa is doing the fence here with electricity. We are the one dig digging the, the mines. We can do the, the tunnel which will, will go out in <laughs> we can do we can the, do the tunnel, tunnel that we go from, from this Zimbabwe here to you know. <laughs> to the so this is a waste of time. So you know, I, and then I was just like, "What now? What I did?" Well, people have been pushed to the end. You will find a way out. <laughs> Imagine to to come with, a, with an idea to say we can dig the tunnel. We should we can take it around 20, 20 meters away, or twenty or two kilometers or four kilometers away to go out somewhere else in the bush. And then what it will be. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it, was a, it was very interesting. So those are the things which really, um, to finish with this kind of foreigners coming to South Africa, let's see if the leaders of the countries, they create employment for their own people. And it's not that to say there is no employment. There is a lot. Mm. But our resources are taken raw to the country's ex, and those are creating their employment for their own people, and they will remain poor. Mm -hmm. And also, there is a part which I would like to under I, I wanted to see because to our raw material, we don't see the first, second, and third grade. Mm -hmm. So we just know that you know this is taken out and then it's done there. They will say, No, what produces this? But I don't know what are we receiving or what are we seeing? Is it third grade or what? So those are the problems. With that being said, we'll be coming on the final segment after this short break mm -hmm. um, so that we can continue our conversations. But part of the question I want to ask him is, when he looks at our leaders in Africa, are they fostering unity? Are they trying to create innovative way of creating solutions in each of their country? And how do we as Africans come together for us to collaborate and elevate one another? Don't go anywhere. Still here on your Afro One Show, I remain your host, the Afropolitan Apostle, Darlington Steve. Before we went on break, we're talking about the question I asked him was a question around African unity and all of that. But please, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, this is the Afro One Show. I encourage you, please subscribe and make sure you share this very particular link to just get an understanding of what we're talking about. Uh, Mr. Dennis sitting with my side here currently runs an organization known as the International Community Unifier. And this is a platform where he uses as much as possible to see how to unify us, all Africans, and also the international community living in South Africa. And please listen to me. That very particular organization is not limited to foreigners alone. 
even South African also is a welcome, especially when you know you're having conflict or maybe there's something that is disturbing you that you need to solve or to serve and he'll be telling us before we close this very particular show as to how to get to his office and also how to do but in the meantime the email that is available on the screen take advantage of it for you to just ask any questions and we'll try as much as possible to answer your question and if need be we'll be able to direct you to his office with that being said before we went on the break we're talking about the whole concept of africans and the question i ask you is this when you look at our leader do you see them united do they have an innovative way on how to create employment and soft solutions in each of their country? Mm-hmm. And, and then finally, what are the systems and strategy that you think that we can be able to employ to elevate and collaborate with one another? The mic is yours. Thank you very much. But that is a tricky part because now, talking to the African Union, uh, AU, okay. the situation which is there, I don't know really what is taking place because since at the time whereby they've started, it's quite difficult to make the continent to be united. The same leaders, they are not united themselves. I'll quote something like uh, Mark Adav. He was coming with a certain idea which they tend to be divided, say, ah, Gaddafi wants to put himself as what? And all those kind of the things. And he finally, the great leader like him, he wanted to bring some of the changes in the continent. They vanished. It's no longer there. And that is a serious problem. I'm not seeing the progressive thing in the African Union, which is there because even the single pamphlet, even a single pro- program to say this is, has been generated or is done by the African Union. I'm not seeing anything. There is nothing. Mm. I'll say, okay, I'm an African. I'm not supported by them, but I've done something to the Sadek region to say, okay, let's, I take the people of the Sadek region. Mm. We go to one country. Mm. But even the small thing like that is not done. Mm. Nothing practical. Even a pamphlet which will talk about us as a, an African to say how we have to do this and that. And there is a, a problem which I'm facing, which I'm not happy if you're here. Like South Africa, the media will talk about the continent, you'll talk about Africa and mm. all of this. Well, the activities outside mm. they're not for the continent mm. so which means our big problem is the fact that even african union is not pioneering anything or educational programs it's they... very very serious really because they were supposed to create some programs which they educate they were supposed to adopt like i'm not pushing for my side I hear you. but if they can see oh this one is doing well let's adopt his program to help us but they are there as african union and that it ends they on top mm. with the, the top leadership. Nothing else like an information we're getting on the ground floor mm. Mm. at the grassroots level. We're not getting anything as an information to say the African Union now is it on this step. The African Union now is planning to do this and that. We are having a very serious problem. We have a main, the continent is rich. I hear you. I hear you. It that was no way to move from the country where the person is or is it from. It was no way to move if the African Union was doing proper. Those governments, those presidents, once the person is elected, it's just to check for his pocket. pocket. Mm. So those Mm. are the problems. Mm. But how then do we, and I like what you're doing because um, with your platform known as ICU, how then do we as individuals begin to find a way of fostering unity, finding a way of creating innovative? What do you think that we can do? And as, as a man running these very particular organizations, mm. you might have one or two ideas that you think that we can begin to engage in, in terms of creating, for example, the Afri one that we're trying to create. Mm. So um, programs, they'll help because uh, the mindset was uh, already, uh, there is something on the way X colonized. Okay. Okay. Mindset is it uh, colonized? Like, I'll talk about South Africans. Uh, they're not people whom the, the, they don't like traveling. They're home defenders. Okay. So, traveling is whereby one will learn. You'll get to know this and that, what is taking place, how to do this, how to move. But they'll tell you that the reason why they don't travel is because their country is better than your country. Okay. It's better when you travel to the country, which is not better for you to explore and then to see what you can do to elevate that country and then to avoid people coming into South Africa. Thank you. <laughs> you can shoot. I'm listening. <laughs> yes. So that is one of the things which we have to do. So, you know, there are a lot of opportunities outside. Mm. 
There are something which I will give you as an example. Portuguese, they came in South Africa in 1974, when it was the interim government of, uh, 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 of Mozambique or of uh, Frelimo, something like that. Mm. So, yeah, it was a very serious problem through interim government. They have entered South Africa, but you'll find that there are those who would be working with those Portuguese. As they found, oh, so and so is it in South Africa now, and then after some time they followed mm. those bosses, Portuguese, mm. they found them in South Africa. Mm. And uh, surprising, those whites, it was nothing like to say how to apply this or having the problem to say documentations. Mm. Mm. Zimbabwe, which was Rhodesia. Same problem. They came here. The whites. The, the whites, yes. Mm. At the time when they came, uh, to my info, to what I've seen is that they've engaged a lot. The white people, those whom they were coming from Zimbabwe, they were engaged in the police. Those are the ones that came general, they came this, they came whatever, all those kind mm. of the position of the police and all of these things. And Zimbabweans now following their bosses. Mm. Mm. Because mm. Now there is no long employment at that site and all of these in those kind of the problem. And then ah, let's we follow Mr. John or Mrs. Smith and all of these, those kind of the things. Mm. And then when they come, Smith will tell, oh, this was my my boy in Zimbabwe. Mm. Those are the problems. So it's very, very serious. And then we, we, we have really to focus and then to see if really we mustn't be back on the part of the regime or on the to be colonized again. We have to stand up. If somebody will come to ICU now, ICU means your organizations, what yes. would they expect to get from you? Okay, it will depend to what the person is, ha is having as a problem. He will explain the problem which is facing, and I will advise what to do in terms of the problem the person is facing. So all, all nationalities are welcome? They are welcome. To come to your organization? Yes, yes. As you can see, the logo of my organization is that the hands is that the black and white holding the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Black and white holding the world. Yes. And so the, the globe. Yes. Okay. As we begin to bring my thought to a close, mm. and you want to send a message to an African leader currently not watching you, what would be that message? That's your camera. Okay. For the African leader or African leaders who are there, what I'll uh, like to throw as a message for one to focus on is to see if you really they have to look at the situation of uh, creating employment and uh, opening doors for investors and uh, planning also for the investment to be not only in South Africa, but yes, those countries which are in the continent, they have to, the investors, they have to go on it. And then for that, for us to avoid a high number or a high number of the foreigners coming, or a high number of the people coming into South Africa. Because with employment in the country X, is whereby no one will jump to South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa, it looks like a small Europe. I hear you. It's a country lost in Africa. That's why the. Situation. That's why sometimes they feel as if. Funny enough, I like cracking jokes. I say sometimes South Africa feel as if they are not in Africa. You know, so that is something. So, so that is the situation. So what I can recommend is that really, if there is a possibility, they have to open up channels for investors to come in high number. They have to know for the country to say no, come to the country to say this and that. Like when we went to Mozambique, I took my youth to the coast. We drive, we, we, we drove through the coast and then whereby the, uh, the road ends and then we will jump and then we'll enter to the other side. And then finding that there are areas whereby one can do something. Mm -hmm. So it's very important really for the leaders to focus on the, uh, on their lead, on their understand. Yeah. Do you believe that Africa will ever get to the point where all its borders or probably the visa regulations that seems to restrict us will fall? Yeah. Uh, I understand the visa can fall, but to control is needed. Because we have to know this person is from where. So you have to, to have something to identify himself. To say, okay, I'm here in South Africa or I'm here in Mozambique. I'm here in Zimbabwe. I'm here in Malawi, but I'm from the country X. Okay. 
So that is very important. It's not just to say, okay, we have to open the borders and then without any identification. But so identification is needed is in needed. open borders policy. Identification policies. is needed for us to know, oh, this person may have done this from this place. And then that's very important. What are the programs um, are we going to be expecting from you um, as this year is unfolding? Oh, <laughs> it's a serious problem as I, I was talking about the resources. Okay to say I'm stuck not to move out of my program is very, very important. Like, as I've said, if you can say, invite the people who they've participated once in your program, you'll find people who are grown up now, they're still coming to visit my, to visit my office saying, oh, yeah, you took us to this and that, we've seen this and that, and our way of living now, we don't want anything like maybe there is xenophobia or there is this and that as a problems, we are always Focusing to what you have taught, you have taught us. The camera is on. Call for partnership and sponsorship for your for your programs. Really, I will, I'm humble requesting, if whoever is listening to this program, put a hand. I've done something special in uh, the country of South Africa because through the marches, through the lobbying, to which I've done to the government of South Africa, uh, South Africa understood. And then there are achievements which are there. And then for me to get stuck or not to move forward to, with other programs is due to the situation which I'm facing. Funds, like there is a plan to do some schools here in South Africa. There are some schools which are closed. Mm. To open and using the foreign community whom are having the skills X. Mm. And then to help kids those who are, are facing difficulties on meds or anything with their faces difficulties. So to have that school whereby those kids they will be helped. Mm. Also, the company is, there is a program to start up a company whereby we'll go province to province here in South Africa and then recruiting the youth to come and land the job and we'll speak to the insurance company. They'll give the cars which they say those are beyond repairs cars. They can do the panel bit. We can strip the engine. Those, this one will deal with a starter, uh, alternator. He'll deal with this after six months. Doing that every day, mm. he'll be having something to do with his own hands. Mm. So I'm requesting for a support, hands for that, for the problems to continue because we have to educate our youth left and right, if not only South Africans. But left and right, they have to understand. Example, when you, you come to South Africa, it's not that to come and destroy the country, start stealing, doing funny things and all. Mm. So those are the problems which we have and then looking for funds for. How can they find you? And um, what are the necessary information you want to give them out there? Okay. Um, it will depend because uh, sometimes when there's a program post, Sometimes we don't need only money, but material also, like going to such a country, transportation and all of this, because we don't have uh, proper transport to move. And some of the country, when you move, it needs the car X, whereby you have to go further and checking this and that. Mm. So those are the problems. Transport and uh, like supporting for the office to continue doing some payments and all of these and activities, daily activities. Okay. My, my people need something uh, to be given because for them to come to work, they need a transport. So those are the problems. Contact details that they can find you. Contact details, like your okay. office contact details, okay. your email website and all of that. Um, what is those? On, uh, for my email is Dennis. Matuse at yahoo.com, small letters, all of it. All right. And then my telephone number is 082-7933-970. All right. Yes. So your email and your phone number. Yes, yes. All right, family. Um, the, those very particular information is currently available on the screen. Take advantage for his office. And if you're having any challenges for you to be able to get solutions, he'll be able to guide you. And please, I want to compel and as as he prepares his parting message um, to us Africans living in South Africa, that will be your parting message. But as he's preparing his parting message, my quest, my appeal to us all Africans living in South Africa to say, please and please, let's collaborate. Let's come together and let's help one another. The truth of it is the fact that he cannot do it alone. I cannot do it alone. 
um, when we all come together in the what the consciousness of unity. And one of the things somebody once said to me, he said, Darlington, this that you are doing is the fact that you may not be able to live to experience it and have made peace. Mm -hmm. That yes, I'm going to forerun something that will make my children and my grandchildren to be able to benefit from it. It's called life. And it's only a selfish father that will want to be bigger than their children. That's how I will say it. It's only a selfish father that wants to be bigger than their children. But if you know that you are a progressive human, you want to invest in something that will outlive you. But I've been said, family, let's unite. Let's come together to see how to elevate and create innovative ways and how to solve our problems in our each countries and also in South Africa where we are currently living. And finally, let's see a way of how to collaborate. My parting, your parting message to us all Africans living in South Africa. Yes, I'm living or I'm, I'm requesting. Your closing, your closing message to us all. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm uh, requesting all the uh, Africans who are living in, in, in South Africa to collaborate, to visit, to visit my office and then to get more information and to see practical. I'm not a man of the street. I mean, no, shame is not. He has an office. I've yes. been there. <laughs> I have to say that. So, I've been there. Visit my office to see the reality. And uh, you'll be helped. You'll be assisted to whatever, depending on the situation. We all manage to break our break, and then we all won't. You know, we are in the foreign land, and then tends to be the problem. But uh, what I will say at the moment is just to say thank you for you as listeners. And uh, join or visit the office whereby you'll be explored more. There is a lot of fish to the program like this is not whereby you will get this and that and that. Trump. To for you to see you practical or there are those whom they know, Mr. Bangani, uh, what kind of the help we have. Mm. And then we have to be sure on that and then come forward and visit the office at any time. You are South African, you are a foreigner, you are a white, you are welcome to the office. Thank so you. it's after one officially now I want to put you on the spot. It's after one open to partner with you. Oh, okay. We can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this is the lighter part of the show. <laughs> okay. No, that uh, is something which... Uh, we'll we can see. discuss off yeah, We can discuss and then we'll sign the agreement and then see how that it is. See, when you talk to fathers of the land, they like agreement signing. And that's the problem with our young generation. <laughs> You see what is happening in Kenya? Yes. Young yes. generation does not want to hear signing Ababa. We do not want tax increase. Yes. End it. Whatever contract you have signed with whoever, cancel it. That's a problem. Yes. And I think that's the thing there where my generation and stuff. And that's where, mm. because we are quick in terms of progressive thinking and we have access to information online and co on. So mm -hmm. we then push. And sometimes when you hear, no, let's go have, because I, I struggle also mm -hmm. with that. I've been honest um, in terms of age-wise, you are a father and I respect you for that. But I also struggle when I go for meeting and, I, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing, let's have a meeting to discuss a meeting. Yes. I'm like, Baba, eh, 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 Baba, can't. I remember I was supposed to have a meeting this morning. I was sent to the president. I said, see, Baba, what am I coming for? Mm -hmm. What do you guys need? Mm -hmm. Tell me the thing. Just I'm coming there. We are doing it now. I'm not coming for a meeting to introduce myself. Yes. Then we'll not go back again and come back. I'm like, ah, it ain't happening with me. <laughs> that's my generation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... With well, that being said, family, we've come to the end of this very particular um, show. Um, I don't know if I want to ask, maybe you have anything in your mind that you want to say? Uh, anything. It can be the fact that, hey, Mara, every foreigner has gone back to your country. <laughs> Oh, no. no, I'm just cracking joke. But mm -hmm. anything you want to say that you feel that the people need to hear from you, and this is anything means anything. What is that? Uh, one of the things is just to 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 advise or to request my fellow brothers Africans, um, cry. Mm. Let's try to avoid such a problems like uh, coming to the country and then we will get involved in the crime activities. We have to avoid that, and then let's be united. And then show that here to your country there is education which we're given by the parents and all. So really that is a very, is a key, is very important. It's not that when you are in the country X and then you start, once you do something wrong, oh, where is the, where is it from? Ah, it's from Mozambique. That means the whole Mozambique. That's true. true. 
Those it's like it's like my country now. Everything about Nigeria. No wow. Way. It's my country. You guys, yes, they yeah. have blackmailed the country. No, no, <laughs> that is a problem. So really, we have to behave. We yeah. have to see a way how do we behave once we're out and then uh, life-wise. Even you are in the, the in your country, you have to see how do you behave. Because yeah. it's very important. Respect is the first thing. Discipline is the first thing in every house or country. Thank you. With that being said, family, we've come to the end of this very particular episode, and I believe that you all enjoy the conversations. And as I my parting message, please understand this. Criminality, it is not a nationality issue. It's a personality issue. If you know the criminals that are causing problems in this very particular nation where we are called South Africa, please report them to the authorities. And if not so, if you're struggling in terms of the authority hearing you, you can use the contact detail that is currently on the screen, and we'll try as much as possible to help you facilitate. Please hear me. I am not sponsored by the government. I don't bring a guest to sponsor them to come and say what they say. This is an elderly man. He can't lie at this his age. I did not pay him to come and say all that he says. I say all of this because I want you to understand that we are just trying to bring a progressive conversations and people to onboard in their experiences. We have brought in South Africa and we've brought in name of the nationality you want to mention. With that being said, please and please, like he says, let's collaborate. You can also visit our website, which is known as Africa. It's currently the many of you know that very particular website for you to see some of the things we are also trying to do. And one of the things I'm looking forward is also to see a way of working with um, Mr. Pangeni that is sitting by my side here to see because he's already ahead of me that I can say point blank. I've seen his work. He's ahead of me and I'll try as much as possible for me to keep building the relationship and see how we can come up with programs that will be able to elevate us as Africans living in this very particular country. With that being said, it's a wrap. I remain your host, therefore pull it in a poster. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you and I believe that you enjoy your conversations. Yes, sir. You did enjoy it. Yes. All right. All right. With that being said, I'll see you on the subsequent productions. Bye for now. Always know too well that I am the Afropolitan Apostle, known as Darlington Steve. God bless you.